continue with the sign up flow. Mm-hmm. And um, my startup so yeah, actually making mistakes. Yep. I was gonna say my startup as well in the beginning. I saw a lot of people had to like start a, a register form with their email and multiple times their their password. But actually over the last 10 years I've seen big companies and small companies just reducing those uh that those twice that you need to fill in your password and even more and more just integration with one click sign on where with your other social media accounts like of google or from facebook and so on so it's uh, really that's as well kind of a default because even when you give access to some of your social uh with your social media login immediately they could uh, set your profile picture or other stuff which makes it already much uh, better experience uh, of the, the software but okay that's a uh, aside i interrupted you yeah, uh, yeah good point talking. good point uh you want to make mistakes impossible uh, when you can or at least make them visible and as explicit as possible also think about like what, what kind of user is this is this a pro user or a casual browser mm-hmm. um, of your app or a first-time user uh but yeah don't don't make too much assumptions about their their knowledge or ability um mm-hmm. and if something does deviate from the norm again really think about the standard average flow the happy path then make it visible that the user is is doing something out of the ordinary uh like um, ask him a few times like are you sure you want to delete this your progress will be lost stuff like that yeah okay okay um and the last thing maybe based on uh-huh. those uh characteristics is um progressive disclosure which actually so yes. allows users to quickly understand the basics and then slowly dive deeper into the product as they gain experience. Maybe for the audience, uh, exactly um, what does this mean? Um, who has yep. it, who hasn't it? Um, so I'll let you uh, give you a little uh, monologue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I love this. I love this concept. It, it sounds complicated, progressive disclosure. But once you get it, uh, it makes so much sense. And Apple is really... Um, good at this. It's basically the the ultimate tr- trade off between um, simplicity mm-hmm. and uh, a customization uh, for power users. So what you do is you have. I'm trying to think, like for example, with a good good programming language, mm-hmm. you want simple things to be simple, easy things to be easy. So you want like a kid to be able to get up and running or a novice or a first time user that's never programmed before mm-hmm. to be able to create a simple program but a real one not a not a fake environment like a real code and then you also want to have um again progressively like in the word a power user be able to dive under the hood uh and still uh make uh, complex adjustments and optimize so uh, i'm going to repeat the sentence making simple thing- things simple and complex things possible and apple is really good at this with their apis when you develop apps for example they have usually they have like a very easy high level uh, way to open the camera app and they do it all for you uh usually in in apps you will recognize stuff i've seen that before oh that's just a standard component Mm -hmm. that they give you but if you want you can create your own custom uh camera and tweak all the settings basically mm-hmm. so um so that's the idea is giving uh not locking locking your api or your service down is giving the the experts mm-hmm. the tools but still having a layer uh on top of it so basically you have to say okay i know what i'm doing let me in <laughs> and yeah, for yeah, other yeah. people still still make it make it accessible uh does that make sense correct like an example of mine like i uh use it as well uh, libraries uh, inside of my software uh, and initially um, I wasn't that good of a programmer and it was for example a, an easy slider uh, and you would take a little bit to code that in CSS um, or with, uh, with uh, JavaScript but then I just uh, put in the, the library and immediately all the default settings of the width height and the sliding motion was all there instead of um, other packages which I didn't use because I installed them as well, tried it, but then you had to all different settings and all kind of stuff, and it demotivates the uh, user or the or the programmer. And yep. the package with the best defaults eventually won uh, or library. Um, so that's another example uh, of even a in a in a startup world where everything has to go really fast. Now, um, now that we actually uh, discussed um, 
the characteristics of good and bad defaults, it's still there's something overlaying. You have software uh, which has its defaults, but we wanted to talk about as well why you need a platform. So um, the definition that we uh, we have over here um, is a definition of Bill Gates. Um, and the definition says a platform is when the economic value of everybody that uses it exceeds the value of the company that creates it. Let's go um, maybe first to you personally. Uh, why do you think it's important that companies need to have a platform? Yes, well, it sounds good. And everybody wants one. And it's like, oh, we're a platform, this and that. <laughs> but true. very few uh, actually have a real um, a real platform that, that fits this definition. Uh, and then the best example um, in recent memory is, is the Apple App Store. Uh, people can't afford not to be on it. And they will have to bend and follow Apple's rules and Apple's tools in order to, to be... Uh, on the app store because being on the app store is just like uh, having a, a big billboard uh, back in the day. Uh, you have to be present mm -hmm. for people. But the reason also why you want a platform is because what we alluded to earlier is you have so much power, mm -hmm. uh, so much more power. You get to make decisions for the user. And so if you, it doesn't take much um, like uh, extra pushing to tilt uh, the user in a certain direction if you control uh, top down uh, mm -hmm. what happens even a slight tweak um, and like which email app they use or whatever can can point them in a certain direction and then additionally if you have power over other players on your platform then yeah you you you're in the, the best the best position yeah correct what I was still wanted to add as well is that if you have a company you have to really think twice if you want to um, be the platform or be incorporated in the platform. Because in the industry, I see this as well, a lot of fatigueness of platform, like, oh, use this platform for your passwords, this platform uh, for your storage. And it's like all these different platforms. And people say like, ah, all these different subscriptions that I need to pay uh, or uh, I don't find, I want just one centralized place. So sometimes it's better to, uh, your service um, that it's just incorporated in an existing platform and and instead of just building it your own because there's often a lot of already resources in those platforms which you can use and data that's already there stored from um, your customers so i just wanted to do that a platform is strong but a platform is as well very expensive to build so sometimes that's it's good true. to just uh, and also... hop on in, uh, another one <laughs> For sure, and the, just the, the mental context switching, the hassle is uh, usually not worth it. That's why Facebook groups still works so well. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to look far for the best platforms. Twitter, YouTube, uh, th don't bother with a different video service. Just create a YouTube video, put it on private if necessary, and they have the tools for you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, don't, don't try to create uh, another uh, Facebook groups with less features. Okay. One and last question. And worse defaults. Yeah. I want one last question uh, to end with. Maybe uh, Spotify, because you work there, and uh, you said as well personally to me, you're now um, uh, are working as well in the in the offices. And the question was, uh, is Stop Spotify a very strong platform um, that actually exceeds uh, its value to its users? Um, or is it uh, trying to be a platform and not yet a platform? What is kind of your, your take on that? Is it just part of the Apple eco and Android ecosystem? Uh... It's certainly the goal and we're well on our way there because our mission uh, is to have uh, not only a billion users, but the second part of our mission is to empower uh, 1 million people to make a living out of the platform. Mm -hmm. And now we have podcasts. Uh, and again, this podcast is also directly put on Spotify. Um, you have this two-sided market with the consumers and the creators. And uh, once we add other uh, stuff to it, like audiobooks, which is already available in the US, we're going to be a uh, true uh, audio platform i think that's a, a beautiful thought to end with um people and uh, our listeners hopefully you enjoyed this podcast episode 11 so we keep going hopefully we can uh, go into the three digits um hopefully you enjoyed it let us know with any feedback 
and give us a thumbs up like us on and follow us on spotify and see you on the next episode of the unquestioned podcast <laughs> bye bye ciao, ciao.